Thank you, Sharon, for inviting me to the uh, present my uh, uh, early stages um, regarding the butterfly life cycles. And thank you very much. I, I uh, a very good morning to all of uh, all of the viewers. So I will start my presentation. What I will speak today about my inspirations life cycles, unique egg laying behaviors, the caterpillars and types of hosts, and some tips for amateurs. My inspirations. Dr. Krishnan Lekunde. He is from NCBS. Actually, I started uh, studying Indian butterflies in 2007 when I used to document butterflies uh, via photography. And that time I used to get a lot of uh, new re new records of uh, you know, early stages of the, which never been uh, documented earlier. So I used to share my images with Dr. Krishnan Lekunde and uh, I used to get an identification regarding their uh, uh, the identification of the some butterflies. So he used to guide me a lot and he's a mentor for me because in initial stage he guided me a lot and like someone says, uh, uh, mentors, uh, you know, uh, you one has to uh, work hard and and so sometimes your mentors guide you really well and then you can develop your skills by studying in nature. Okay, so one more inspiration of mine is Dr. Angita Gupta, uh, with uh, with whom I uh, uh, I presented my few research paper. I published with her, and I'm very thankful to uh, Blaise Pereira, who introduced me with the Dr. Angita Gupta. Because initial stage, I used to study a uh, lot of life cycles uh, from various habitats across Mumbai. So I used to get uh, while rearing. I used to get a lot of parasitoids uh, from egg, from, from butterfly egg, from larva of butterfly, and even from the pupa. So uh, initially I was not aware about uh, the importance of the, such kind of wars. So Blaise Pereira, uh, who was a friend of mine, who used to study a lot of uh, uh, early stages as well. So he was uh, know, knowing Dr. Angita Gupta. So he introduced me via, with her. And uh, she said, Ki, Ari, you are getting so many uh, parasitism, uh, uh, parasitic wars from uh, butterfly larvae and eggs. You should publish this, uh, this data. So it will be helpful for uh, next generation to study uh, uh, their role in the ecosystem and all. So I published several research papers along with uh, Dr. Ankita Gupta, including several species, uh, new species of parasitic wars, as well as several new host records we, we have published and few more publications are still in place. Okay. So there is one more uh, inspiration of mine, Dr. Sunil Zoshi. He is from same institute and uh, Dr. Ankita only uh, introduced me with uh, him and he is a principal scientist and uh, an entomology. Uh, and uh, he is basically working on scale insects, mealybugs and armored scales. Okay. So he is excellent artist as well, and he used to guide me a lot uh, for my uh, art and all. So I use whenever I uh, you know uh, I stuck something uh, somewhere uh, regarding uh, I I have some queries regarding art. So I used to call him and take his advice. So I'm feeling very fortunate to work with him uh, on one uh, mealy box species, which is for, we are we have reported and which is going to be a new species, and we are going to publish it very soon. So now we are moving to the next slide. So butterfly life cycle. Butterfly life cycle consists of four stages in life cycle, which starts from egg, larva, pupa, and adult butterfly. This is an egg laying image. Next slide. Egg laying is the process in which the female butterfly searches for specific host plants to lay her eggs on it. This process follows the mating in which the male butterfly populates with the female and this egg laying process immediately follow after a few days. Female sometimes 
travel several hundreds of kilometers in the search of host plants to deposit their eggs. Uh, sometimes we observe uh, several species which you know uh, lay egg during the morning time. But there are some species of butterflies which known to lay egg uh, during the evening time. So if you are an amateur uh, observer or amateur uh, uh, studying butterflies, then you need to observe such observations. So you need to uh, whenever you will go uh, out for outing or some butterfly trip. So you need to observe which kind of butterflies uh, lay egg at what time. So that is also a crucial point uh, we need to document. Okay. So here are some of the, some of the examples where you can see uh, female butterfly laying eggs on their specific host plants. Okay. So I'm moving to the next slide. This is a female of Dianade fly, which literally lay eggs, uh, lay her eggs on any plant, or sometimes on soil, rock, or wooden logs. The image here, uh, the image here A, represents the female laying egg on grass blade. Image B, uh, female laying egg on soil, and image C. Uh, female laying egg on unidentified plant and image D uh, the female same female it is the same female which is laying egg on um, Malvesi family member uh, so they are known this particular species is known to lay egg as on any surfaces or, or the, any other host plants which is not recorded for them the early uh, larvae are not known to feed upon them but despite that, this particular uh, egg, uh, this particular eggs uh, from which the larvae eclosis later on uh, find their host plant on its own and they feed upon it and until the pupation occurs. Okay, so this is another uh, unique behavior of this particular species. There is one more species uh, called peacock pansy, which is also uh, known to you know deposit their eggs on uh, various host plants which are not known for them. But despite that. So their larvae, uh, you know, find their actual host plants, which uh, on which they are going to feed. So let us move on to the next slide. Selecting the host plant. So this is basically a painted lady butterfly, which is known to known to occur all over India. This particular photograph I photographed at uh, Himachal Pradesh. And uh, here you can see uh, the sequence of uh, female, you know, uh, which is scanning the uh, leaves, whether it is a, whether it is its host plant or not. And after confirming the host plant, she deposit her legs, uh, her eggs. So if you are observing in the field, uh, if you want to study early stages, then you should know which, which type of plants they prefer and how they behave. Uh, when they lay eggs. So such kind of things we need to uh, document. Okay. So we will move on to the next slide. Dif a different shape of butterfly eggs. So here, some butterflies are having bottle shape. Some are having, and some are having dome shape. Bottle shape uh, eggs are those uh, like uh, grass yellows, emigrants, and wanderers, those are having bottle shaped eggs. Whereas mormons, roses, and peacocks and bird wings do have spherical eggs. Whereas uh, blues, some, some some certain species of blues and uh, skippers do have dome shaped eggs. So we'll move on to the next slide. Guess the butterfly egg. Can you guess, Sharon? Yes, sir. I'll just turn on the chat channel. Just give me a minute. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Anyone who is uh, present here, uh, who is doing life cycle at home, can or interested in studying early stages. Uh, Savita, 
So yeah. <laughs> so 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 can anyone guess where uh, where the eggs are and what are these eggs? I have turned on the chat channel, so please uh, feel free to text in the chat window. Sa Sa Savita says some royal. <laughs> no, Savita, one more chance. Hello? Uh, except Savita, no one has replied yet, so, so we'll okay. wait. <laughs> okay, so we'll, I will give the answer. So it's, it's a spindasis, it is A, which, uh, you know, uh, the, which is the, uh, here you can see on the left side, uh, the two eggs. Uh, which are having pale green in color. Those are the fresh laid eggs. And just after five minutes, the color of the egg changes to the white. And after eight hours, you can see the difference. The eggs completely turn and well camouflage on the meat rib of uh, of the eggs, uh, of its host plant. So this is an ex excellent example how the uh, how the eggs you know ch changes color. Hmm? So. Uh, so, so someone is asking what is the common name of spindus it's, uh, it's a it's a common short silver line i'm going to talk about uh, it on the next slide which is mentioned there okay so spindus ictus is a common line so this is the entire sequence i have observed uh, at turahalli hello hello sharan yes sir i can hear you can go on. Uh, you can hear me. Yes. So this is particular behavior I observed during, uh, at uh, Surahalli Hills in Bangalore. Uh, actually, a few. Uh, okay, fine. So this is a, a complete sequence of uh, common short silver line, uh, which is found all over India. And uh, the host plants of this particular species were not much studied. And uh, few years back, I went to Bangalore for uh, for some research work. Hello, can you hear me, Sharan? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. So, a uh, few years back, I went to Bangalore, uh, and that, uh, that time I went to Tura Halli Hills to observe certain endemic species or, and, and uh, two targeted species. So, there I, I was you know, planning to see this particular uh, butterfly, which is a uh, common short silver line, which is known to occur there. So one of my friend uh, who is a botanist uh, called Anurag Sharma. So I took his help and I asked him to show me the habitat where I can see this particular butterfly because I desperately wanted to see this species and to you know study its early stages because the uh, uh, early stages of this particular species was not known from India. Previously, it was reported uh, from Sri Lanka by Vander Putin and. Uh, also, there are other species uh, from silver line which were well studied in, uh, from Sri Lanka, but not from India. So uh, this particular species was my on my target to you know uh, basically we always you know target some species wherever you go uh, outside uh, your state. So we target certain species to you know मुझे ये देखना है ये species देखना है ये life cycle करना है. So we used to da do that. So I did. Uh, I targeted this species and I asked my friend Anurag to show me the habitat where I can see this particular species. So uh, we went at the uh, the Tura Halli Hills and uh, we were searching for the uh, particular this particular species. But uh, even after searching for almost one and a half hour, we could not find a single individual. So what happened is. Later on, Anurag said, Ki Parish, chalo, hai. Uh, we have, I have to show you many new uh, plants which are reported from Tura Halli Hills. There are various other plants which are recently being uh, uh, discovered from Tura Halli, which is completely new to the science. So he wanted to show me that. But I said, no, this is my target. I want to see this particular species first. So what happened? After the, even after the spending time in this field, one, almost for one and a half hour, so we could not find a single individual. So I was a bit uh, disappointed. But all of a sudden, uh, when, uh, when she, uh, one butterfly came in front of me and it was hovering around me and it sat on the host plant where uh, it deposited eggs. But uh, when I saw that butterfly, I saw its upper side, upper side, which you can see on the right side, middle one image. 
so it was basking in the sun and later on i immediately called all my friends uh, anurag and all so to just come and see this uh, um, butterfly so what happened just after a few minutes it was started uh, you know tapping its uh, tapping her abdomen on the host plant so i was uh, you know very curious to know what kind of behavior is this because i never noticed such kind of behavior earlier so uh, after a few minutes i i noticed the the abdomen of the of this particular female was completely you know uh, swollen swollen it was a completely loaded uh, female which is trying to deposit her eggs on this particular host plant and this host plant is known as uh, cassia montana which is uh, endemic to tamil nadu as well as uh, some parts of kerala and karnataka so uh, when uh, when i saw this particular uh, female trying to tap her uh, her abdomen on the host plant i was uh, i was shocked uh, what kind of behavior is it? i never reported such kind of behavior earlier so actually uh, this, the thing is uh, that female was trying to you know invite some ants she wants to check uh, whether they are, the presence of ant is there or not because uh, in their early stages they need ants to you know nurture them to you know uh, to protect them from the predators so uh, so it was checking whether the ant uh, ant colony is there on this particular host plant or not she was you know uh you know, she was uh, rotating her um, antennas uh, upside down uh, continuously and she was tapping one two one two one two she was tapping her abdomen on the host plant and uh, later on when she confirmed uh, that there are some ants uh, present she laid her eggs so that was a moment uh, when i i said jureka yes this is the thing i was i wanted and i captured uh, uh, captured few images of this which are here you can see and this uh, the this photographic uh, record is first time ever uh, documented from asia so if you are amateur observer or amateur uh, study uh, you are uh, go study uh, butterflies in the wild you need to uh, you know observe such kind of rare phenomena and uh, you know some unique behaviors you need to observe okay so i will move on to the next slide uh, host plants used by multiple species so uh, if you want to rear some butterflies on uh, at your home so you should know at least which plants they need you should have su sufficient amount of knowledge about the host plant so we need to study them so this is another example of uh, molavas pipata that is known as candy corn plant belonging to the sesalpiniaceae family here you can see three arrows uh, denoted by one two three numbers uh, wait a second uh, first egg is of a common grass yellow second is uh, egg is of uh, six line blue and third egg is of yellow sun blue and this is uh, this particular host plant is also reported from blue nava which is a scheduled one species and which is extremely rare in the western ghats and uh, you can see various uh, butterfly species lay egg on this particular host plant okay so uh, if you are studying host plants as a amateur you need to know which during which season which species are using this particular plants so such kind of information is very very essential Uh, during studying early stages so if you are rearing some butterflies at home so you should know uh, that uh, this uh, kind of plants where uh, where exist and uh, is it accessible to you or not so and uh, so that you can rear them uh, at your home if you are doing uh, on a serious note so there are another example uh, of uh, similar uh, host plants uh, which is butia monasperma that is called as palash and again the one more example is cassia fistula which is known as amaltas and these particular plants are the, being used by various uh, number of species during their early stages so we need to you know conserve such kind of plants uh, which support so many organism oh, so i will move on to the next slide some interesting caterpillars so uh, these are above uh, 
Above row, you can see are the, the Nawabs and Rajas caterpillar. The middle one is uh, on the upper row is uh, Tawny Raja. And on the right side, there is a common Nawab. And on the left side is a black Raja. So uh, this particular uh, the species of butterflies are known to use uh, Fabaceae plants for, as, a, their, as their larval, larval fruit plants. On the middle row, the, uh, there is a caterpillar of common rows, which is molting. Molting is a process which is very essential for uh, development of stages of butterflies. So many, uh, several uh, larvae of butterfly species known to mold after a few days. So you need to observe, if you are rearing at home, you need to observe how many instars they are changing. So like one instar, two instar, third instar, four instar, uh, up to five instar, then generally uh, butterflies uh, mold. Okay. So here, uh, one more example uh, of large guava blue uh, female, which is depositing her egg on fruit of wild guava. And here you can see a tiny hole uh, which is uh, uh, which is done by the caterpillar of this particular species. Uh, it completely bores uh, the fruit and it uh, enters inside the fruit and it uh, feed up, uh, feed uh, feed on the uh, seeds of the fruit and inner uh, inner fleshy fleshy substances. Okay, so in this particular uh, behavior of uh, large guava blue and Again, the below you can see uh, the common guava blue, uh, which are completely uh, spending their life cycle inside the fruit. Yeah, just from for the egg is laid on the uh, top surface of the fruit, and the larva enters inside the fruit later on, and it's completely spends its life inside the fruit. And after it closing, it emerges from the hole, which is uh, present. Uh, you can see from there, and. There is one more uh, caterpillar of spot swirtel. So uh, you can see a tongue like uh, fork shaped structure over here, uh, which is called as osmetarium. And uh, basically, this uh, particular organism is present in swirtel butterflies. Uh, you know, if you threaten them, then they, they will evert uh, this organ and they, it releases pungent smell to, uh, you know. Uh, to you know, alarm the predators like stay away from me. If you are rearing common mormons and uh, blue mormons or uh, uh, tail jay or common jay at home, then you can observe their colors. Even their colors of the osmeteriums are you know amazing. Uh, some butterflies like common mine is having blue colored uh, uh, blue colored osmeterium, whereas you can see here. Uh, which is uh, spots were tail, which is having green colored uh, osmeterium. So you need to observe that too. Okay. So I will move on to the next slide. Mm. This is monkey puzzle. Or you can see here it is a common uh, butterfly species uh, occurs in India, and it is well distributed across India, and it is used in multiple host plants, but. You can, here you can see uh, the few females uh, who are depositing her eggs on the host plants. But uh, this egg laying process is very exhaustive. And after laying egg, uh, they need to rejuvenate their, themselves. And for that, they sometimes go and nectar on certain plants uh, and certain flowers. Uh, or sometimes they uh, drink uh, from the tree sap. But in this case, uh, uh, what I have observed a uh, few years back that um, here you can see a, a larva of monkey puzzle unknowingly providing food source for the adults. It was feeding on, uh, the, here on the left side you can see the uh, plant called Ixora brachiata, which is, quite, uh, which is quite common in the for, uh, deciduous forest. And uh, it is also called as a, a white Ixora. And here you can see the larva of uh, monkey puzzle uh, feeding and later on the adult butterfly uh, just after the, uh, laying her eggs feeding on the scars left behind by the larva itself. So this is again an interesting behavior. Such kind of behaviors we need to observe in the field while studying the early stages. 
And again, you can see here a female of a common to say, uh, which is laying her egg on terminalia. And after laying egg, she immediately, uh, you know, uh, trying to rejuvenate by uh, feeding upon the nectaries of terminalia. Okay, you can see actually the uh, nectaries is below, behind, uh, uh, just behind to the fly. Uh, it was feeding on the nectaries of this particular host plant. And the below is the egg of this particular species. So let us move on to the next slide. This is feeding behavior. Uh, feeding behavior of larvae. On the left, upper left, uh, you can see the feeding pattern of common piero, which is well distributed across India. And you can see uh, their egg, uh, their feeding pattern, how it looks. Uh, it is basically feeding on host uh, uh, plants called uh, zizifus, various species of zizifus, and they make such bite, bite marks on the leaves. They eat just upper surface of the leaves. And again, on the right side, you can see a feeding pattern of common silver line. Here you can see uh, the uh, larvae feeding, uh, feeding from the underneath of, this, uh, of the uh, leaf and they make uh, such, by, such kind of uh, bite marks on the leaf. So again, you can document such kind of things which are very equal, uh, equally important because some same species can, you know, uh, sometimes uh, behave differently. Here in case of orchid tree, uh, here you can see uh, it's a, here you can see uh, the larva of uh, orchid tail butterfly, and the above there is a pupa of the same species. On the left side, you can see, uh, left side bottom there you can see a small tiny egg, and also uh, there is a tiny hole inside uh, on the fruit of orchid. It is basically feed on or several species of orchids, and. In Western Ghats, it shows completely different behavior in early stages, whereas in the Northeast India, it shows completely different behavior. And it has uh, various host plants. Uh, like uh, in, in Western Ghats, I have observed this particular species is known to feed on exclusively on uh, uh, the pods of orchids, whereas in, uh, in Northeast, it feeds on the leaves. So, these are uh, some, some unique things we need to observe as a learner. If you are rearing butterflies, some common cone butterflies, you need to observe you know, what, uh, on what part of the plant they are feeding. Some butterflies are feeding on uh, uh, tender leaves. Some, some may consume um, inflorescence of certain plants or even birds, uh, birds of a plant. Even sometimes they used to feed on some uh, some bark of their host plant. Here you can see one such example of common tinsel butterfly, uh, which is also feed on leaves of uh, the terminalia, but so, in some cases it uses uh, feeding on bark of the uh, same same plant. So uh, this is again uh, you know very unique uh, behavior of this particular species. So I will move on to the next slide. Large cells made from silver line, that is Pindasis volcanus, for refuge on several different plants in different seasons. Here you can see multiple of host plants and you can see some cells. Okay, so this particular species of uh, silver line is uh, making cells to refuge inside which it, it can protect it, itself from birds or some mantis predators. It is, uh, it is. It tries to protect itself from predators like birds and uh, praying mantises and other some predators. Okay. So here are a few examples of uh, host plants which are reported during the span of six years. Uh, one is Cassia fistula, that is known as Amaltas, and Smilax zelenica, which is again a climber. Okay. And this is. Uh, Diospyros melanozyma, which is again a tree, uh, also called as Indian Ebony. Uh, this is again Woodford Rivanda, which is a shrub uh, found in all over India, including Western Hearts and even in the Northeast. And this is host plant, Zizipus Mauritiana. And below to that is Dioscoria 
Wallachi. So this is again a climber. So some species of butterflies use shrubs, climbers, as well as tree. So you need to study that as well. Which kind of a uh, 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 plants they are using? So you you need to study in detail uh, this classification. So I will move on to the next slide. Some host and nectar plants in various stages of butterflies. Uh, Danas crispus, crispus, that is Oriental plain tiger uh, larva feeding on Asclepias curasavica. Uh, here uh, I have depicted two uh, of two different species, uh, which are being used in various stages. Like uh, larvae also feed on this plant and. Uh, the adult stages, some butterflies uh, feed on the nectar of this particular plant. Okay. Here below, you can see uh, uh, Polylina antidecentrica, which is again a host plant for several crows. And uh, you can see on the left hand side below, uh, which is common tiger, uh, sorry, blue tiger uh, uh, nectaring over it. And there, there are certain more species which are uh, feeding on this particular plant uh, in the adult stages as well. So there are a few examples such as uh, um, Cassia pistula also being used in various stages. Butia monosperma is also there. Even Terminaria uh, paniculata also there. So such kind of uh, trees, you know, support uh, uh, butterflies in various stages. So I will move on to the next slide. Parasitic wasp, and these are some of the uh, parasitic wasp families uh, on which butterfly uh, on butterfly larvae uh, on which uh, parasitic wasps lay their egg and they complete their life cycle. So these are few of the families which are reported for reported on uh, butterfly larvae. One is Ichneumonidae, second one is Chalcidiidae, third one is Brachyonidae, and fourth one is Eulopidae. So here is one such example I am going to uh, show you. Uh, this is a species called giant red eye, which is very crepuscular in uh, nature, uh, which is more active during dusk and dawn. Um, and this particular species is uh, being used by several uh, parasitic wasps during its early stages. That is uh, on egg parasitism larval parasitism and pupil parasitism. This is again an interesting read. This is uh, this paper was published by one of my friends, uh, Sandesh Gavas and Dr. Ankita Gupta. So they uh, specifically targeted this particular species and created five different uh, species of parasitic wasps. Now uh, you may ask yourself a question that why you are showing this particular slide. So Parasitic wasp, uh, I, want, I would like to tell you about something about parasitic wasp. They play a major role in ecosystem. They are uh, biocontrolling agents. So many insects, uh, uh, you know, uh, are fall under category of pests. So they are controlling pests as well. So we need to study them. And even uh, such kind of uh, parasitic wasps are very valuable for farmers. Instead of uh, uh, using pesticide, we can use this controlling agent uh, to you know control their population instead of using pesticide so i will move on to the next slide how they lay egg on their host this is an example of a xanthopimpla uh, which belongs to the ichneumonidae family female laying eggs here you can see the female which is having oviposta here again here which actually is, uh, you can see here, uh, its antenna are curled, you know, like in, uh, in uh, 90 degrees. It, it was actually scanning whether the host is inside the uh, uh, cell made by the larva. And once, uh, once she realizes there is something inside this uh, particular leaf or some cell, she immediately deposits her egg inside this uh, uh, host and um, she, lay, uh, she flews away. So I will move on to the next slide. Okay. Egg laying of parasitic was parasitic flies, sorry. Female fly laying egg on caterpillar of Kirmala, Limineus, 
exoticus that is oriental blue tiger okay and the uh, image below is female fl fly trying to lay egg on the caterpillar of black raja so uh, there are some parasitic flies as well uh, these flies are known to use butterfly larvae uh, as a host okay. so here you can see the complete sequence uh, where uh, in which i used uh, i took photographs within a span of half an hour so this particular larvae was not allowing to the uh, female fly to lay her egg it was actually uh, you know uh, alarm when when she noticed that this caterpillar noticed that something is going her uh, going around her, her so she was not allowing to the uh, fly to lay her egg so this is again a interesting behavior you can capture such kind of behavior in the field okay. uh, so i will move on to the next slide So sometimes you know uh, many butterflies pupate on several host plants. Okay, but after eclosion, uh, after eclosion from the uh, pupa, what happens with the uh, pupa? Empty pupal case. The uh, many times they remain as it is. But in some cases, these empty pupal case also provide the shelter for several other organisms like cockroaches or some. Uh, some spiders or sometimes even the ants here i have shown such one exhibit uh, example uh, that is you can see uh, image number a pupil cell of burara jaina that is orange olive uh, butterfly which is belonging to the uh, skipper's family which uses larval host plants hippeg bengalensis which is a climber okay. image number b is intermediate instar of burara jaina that is orange owlet found on same climber and image number c uh, that is polydactyl species of ants taking refuge within the silk bed and pupil case of burara jaina that is orange owlet so even after you know completing the life cycle life cycle some butterflies you know they they you know give shelter to many other organisms and here you can see uh, image number d the alarm and in action while uh, spraying formic acid yeah we actually when i when i saw all this um, particular a uh, pupil cell i noticed there were several ants inside it so i just tried to open it and once i open it this particular ant uh, trying to you know uh, bite and uh, try to uh, spray her uh, spray formic acid so i will move on to the next slide Balkan spiro larva with okay this is particularly called this particular species is called as a Balkan spiro. Uh, I have very special attachment with this particular species because when I started uh, way back in 2009 studying Indian butterflies, so uh, uh, I found this particular uh, this uh, particular particular uh, larvae of this species and I read it at home. So after completing the life cycle, I, I got upper wing of this particular butterfly and I shared it with Dr. Krishna Meg Punte. So he said, this is another stunning discovery by you because this particular species is never being photographed earlier by anybody in India. So uh, you're the first person to document its early stages as well. So we do not have much information about their host plant as well. So. It was a part of our research uh, of uh, uh, Indian Tarukas. So this was the first life cycle I completed and I was not even knowing that uh, this particular species is exist uh, in India. I was just knowing uh, the, there is a species called Tarukas Nara. Okay, that is Indian uh, So uh, um, uh, basically after studying several years, uh, we came to know that this particular species is very variable and in Western Ghats it is having a light pale blue color whereas in the, if you go to the Northeast you can see the upper wing of the same species which is having violet colored upper side and also their wing patterns uh, the spot series also differs a lot during the various season in the monsoon it shows different pattern in uh, um, 
in summer uh, it shows a complete different pattern so if you are studying life cycles and if you are uh, rearing such kind of butterflies then you need to document that as well whether it uh, it is having a dry season form whether it is having a, a wet season form that also you need to study so here you can see a few species of ants attending to the larva and this is not uh, for photograph in one year i took almost 6 to 7 years to document several ant species across india so if you are documenting indian butterflies then you need to keep on studying even though it is a very common species you need to find something uncommonness if you find the such kind of uncommonness it will definitely boost up your morale and it will help you to study more and more into detail okay and one more thing i would like to share with you uh, the one thing uh, you know while uh, studying life cycle you may uh, sometimes come upon a certain question like some stupid question may arise to your mind and one incident happened with me while i was rearing uh, uh, a particular pear of butterfly uh, caterpillar at my home so uh, my parents was uh, were not that uh, that time my parents were not at home uh, for few days and i was alone at home and and i and i i, I was really uh, larvae of this particular species and uh, what happened that really uh, after returning uh, uh, from my work at home i used to document with the ca with my camera so during the night one day what happened i i, I was trying to capture the images of uh, um, larva which is about to pupate so i just photograph it and i close the uh, container but unfortunately or fortunately you can say i forgot to you know the uh, close the lid of the uh, container uh, uh, and it was uh, open slightly open at one side so what happened uh, in, in the morning when i returned to uh, photograph uh, the pupa i was assuming that it must have been pupated so i went and i uh, you know uh, opened the box and i noticed that caterpillar was not there so this is a stupid mistake uh, which i did uh, which i did actually as a learner you must also keep this in mind uh, if you are rearing butterflies at home you should always keep your containers closed uh, so that caterpillars won't uh, go out and pupate anywhere else okay so what happened uh, because i actually i was uh, you know expecting uh, tarucus indica from this particular that particular larvae so the early stages of tarucus indica was not known so what happened uh, the larva the escape larva pupated somewhere in my balcony which is completely uh, uh, closed actually uh, yeah, with the sliding windows and i kept uh, complete close because i was knowing ki caterpillar might be somewhere here only and it will close the the may uh, the adult butterfly will close after 5 days so uh, later on i will come to know which kind of species was that and i was expecting uh, tarucus indica from it and after 5 days when i woke up uh, from in the morning so i just went uh, in the balcony and i noticed i was trying to figure out where the butterfly is so uh, i saw surprisingly there was a uh, indica uh, so not indica there was a uh, dingy land blue inside my house and dingy land blue is not at all a common species in uh, urban habitats in, in mumbai so uh, what happened it was uh, you know surprising for me how come a uh, dingy land blue come in my home Uh, come inside my balcony so i i thought it might be from the same larvae uh, uh, this particular uh, adult butterfly it closed so immediately i took some photographs and i shared with ashok ji and uh, ashok sen gupta and dr krishnan make kunte that i have uh, you know photograph this live particular life cycle and uh, the adult butterfly it closed from this particular larvae which is uh, which is dingy land which is more surprising to me because uh, the larvae is uh, almost identical to um, uh, tarucus uh, butterfly but the adult eclose was uh, the was belonging from the different genus so how come the uh, uh, butterfly from different genus are, are having similar kind of instars similar kind of caterpillars 
so i asked to push me actually it was a stupid question i was uh, you know i was in a dilemma to whether to ask them or not but still i dare to ask them and um, i asked to push me uh, this is what i have observed so what is your opinion so he said parish i never uh, read the, any tarukas apart from tar tarukas naga that is uh, common pyaro so whatever uh, you are sharing is completely new to me even nobody in india or even asia nobody uh, ever documented life cycle of dingi landu so if you, uh, this is a life cycle of dingi landu then it will be definitely a stunning discovery so what happened ashok ji immediately replied to that mail and um, he called me up uh, after few time a uh, few after few times and in his typical tone uh he said hello parish i am ashok here uh the larva you uh, you dikhaya hai tumne wo uh, dingi land ka mujhe nahi lag raha uh, it must be something else uh, sorry i it, uh, it is not like uh, the, um, indica larva nahi hai ye ye kisi uh, dingi land ka ho sakta hai shayad to unhone mujhe sab kuch research paper uh, share kiya so from that i, I could make out ki uh this particular uh, uh, species which is shared from uh which is known from australia uh whose name uh, who, which is known as a tar the petrilaria tombugensis uh and which uses host plant of terminalia catapa that is jungli badam okay so i was wondering ki um, this particular host plant is there in my bearded compound and so why not to go and check uh, cross check whether it is the same species uh, or not so i immediately went up on my terrace with my camera and i saw several butterflies uh, blue butterflies uh, which are hovering around the inflorescences of uh, that particular host plant and uh, i saw one female was sitting on that host uh, inflorescence i immediately took out one photograph and i noticed that it was uh, laying her eggs so you know that particular question you know uh, answered the under another discovery actually this particular dingi land was not on my target at all but simple stupid question may you know you may uh, land up or uh, you know get different answer so that is how the uh, life cycle life cycle of uh, dingi land blue uh, i reported on that particular host plant and later on the uh, to someone else from sri lanka also reported similar host plant for dingi land blue so i will move on to ha uh, uh, okay so one more topic i need to talk about is uh, there are various uh, ant species uh, uh, from india which are uh, you know attending to this particular balkan spiro larvae okay so i will move on to the next slide host plants and host insects these are some of the examples uh, this is a classification of host plants that is trees such as coconut arjun flame of forest shrubs like uh, zizipus acacia etc then again herbs like grasses and climbers like aristolochia cirripedia etc Uh, these are the host plants which are known for butterflies they are consistently using this host plant apart from them some butterflies are known to use insects as their host and those are aphids scale insects mealybugs and ant rolls or their eggs uh, so there are examples like uh, egg fly which is known to feed on some mealybugs and if you go to the north east you can find several larvae uh, of uh, uh, dark east butterflies uh, mortals uh, those are using scale insects for their early stages so uh, this is what interesting about uh, those particular particular species okay so i will move on to the next slide edible food as a food source for caterpillars there are some caterpillars which are known to use limes lemons peach pear even the tamarind even the apples even the guava and also lychee as their host plant so i will move on to the next slide 
some tips for amateurs. So, being as an amateur, you should have patience. Okay. So, if you want to study uh, butterfly early stages at your home, so you need to be very patient because uh, you need to bring them every time uh, some you need to supply them a uh, sufficient amount of food plants some leaves if, uh, and you need to you know continuously clean their uh, uh, droppings I'll wait a moment droppings like that and punctuality is also there then excellent documentations via notes and photographs. We know many individuals and youngsters are documenting uh, butterflies and their host plants as well as, uh, as, well as their early stages. But uh, we need to then uh, document them in a proper manner. And during the various season, we need to study their uh, pattern in during which season they use which host plant and study their regional via uh, and uh, seasonal behavior while feeding on several host plants, we need to study in detail. So we need to develop some observation skills okay? and sharing of knowledge and contribution to the citizen science. Uh, Sharon, I would like to you know, uh, give one example uh, which I explained a few years back when I was documenting Indian butterflies. I used to do, study a lot of uh, host plants across the Western Ghats and Western Himalayas even the peninsula of India, and even in the northeast. So, uh, I used to document for photographic records of several plants, including their flowering, during their flowering season, their fruiting season, how their tender leaves look like. So I used to, you know, uh, share them on several uh, Facebook group, as well as on um, uh, Trees of India website, which is a Google, uh, Google, uh, uh, this thing, um, <clears throat> which is a Google group actually, where a lot of botanists are, uh, you know, uh, sharing their knowledge and sharing their images from various states across India. So once what happened, uh, when the senior most botanist uh, shared his images of uh, some plant from West Bengal. So uh, when I saw that particular species, I replied to his uh, email that this particular plant is uh, known to use as a nectar plant and uh, it is being used by several species of butterflies. So, and I provided him several images which I took in this day. Absolutely stunned. And he replied to me immediately, for his thanks for opening my eyes. Previously, I uh, had this garden, but if I uh, used to, you know, see some saplings of this uh, particular tree, I used to uh, guide my gardener. Do not, whenever you will see the tree, just chop it off or cut it off and throw it away. Uh, this is a uh, this particular tree is a, a weed. So uh, saw these images. Immediately he realizes or a uh, it's a different organisms for ye tree support karta hai aur hum logo ne usse kitni baar nikal ke fek diya hai. So you know it was an eye opener for him. So uh, this is another excellent example where you know you can uh, uh, documentation you can uh, send us uh, conservation message to the others. You can you know. Uh, motivate others why this particular species we need to conserve. Okay, so I will move on to the next slide. Literature and references to study larval stages. So uh, you can uh, refer some of the literature over here. That is websites. Uh, I found butterflies wherein you can see uh, several uh, larval host plant images as well as early stages of many species on uh, uh, um, in India and you can you know uh, you can compare your images if you are rearing some certain species anytime it happens that uh, you will need to uh, take uh, guidance from several uh, reference images 
that uh, which caterpillar this belongs to, uh, butterfly. So you can take guidance from, uh, from such websites. And again, you can take guidance from Facebook groups. You can post your images on the, those groups and identification. Otherwise, you can ask for several uh, experts which are already working in this field. And some other books uh, you can refer. That is Butterflies of Peninsular India by Krishnalek Kunte. Again, Butterflies of India by Isaac Kainkar. And The Life Histories of Asian Butterflies, volume number one and two by Igarashi and Kukuda. Again, Butterflies of Western Hearts by Hemant Ogle and Dr. Milin Bakare. This is another excellent example of, uh, you know, uh, images uh, with the larval, uh, sorry, with the early stages of many uh, 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 Western Hearts endemic species. So you can definitely refer these books uh, for your references. So thank you, uh, slide. Uh, my sincere thanks to all my friends who accompanied me during my field trips and granting me permission to use their images. I sincerely thank to Blaise Pereira, Preeti Patel, Rajesh Deshpande, Dr. Vishal Kodar for accompanying me uh, uh, during my field trips in various times. Also, I'm thankful to Abhay Soman, Swapni Lokhandi, Sagar Rajputar, uh, with whom I have studied several life cycles uh, uh, species of India, and we have uh, collaborated several, several research papers along with them. And also, I'm thankful to Sarang Mathre and Sagar Saran. And I'm very much thankful uh, to Amit Amembal, who, you know, uh, uh, helping me to prepare this PPT. Also, thankful to Ajay Narkani, Jayesh Lambo, and Dr. Anand Navikar, Dhananjay Rao for, uh, you know, giving me some, uh, certain identification keys and providing me uh, identification of several host plants on regular basis. I'm thankful to Dr. Prasad Sound as well, Rajesh Sana and Sarvesh uh, Abdankar, with whom I uh, visited Northeast. Um, and again, I'm thankful to Dipendra Nath Basu, with whom I published my uh, research paper on Indian Tarukas. This list is not exhaustive. And these are my contact details. So that's it from my end and happy butterfly. So Sharan, it's over to you. Yes, sir. So thank you so much for a lovely and insightful session. Yeah. There are a lot of new, new information. I'm thank sure you, a lot of the viewers might be inspired. So you can stop sharing, sir. I'll just turn on the chat window and I'll read out the questions for you. Okay. Uh, I'll start from the first question. One minute. Okay, the first question is from Pranav Dutter. He has asked, I have seen common Mormon lava feeding on previously shredded skin. So why do lava eat shredded skin? Uh, by whom this question is? This is from Pranav Dutter, yeah. Uh, can you please repeat the question? Uh, I have seen common Mormon lava feeding on previously shredded skin. So why does the lava eat shredded yes. skin? Yes, yes, yes. This is excellent observation you have made. Uh, and I have also reported similar kind of uh, observation uh, in case of uh, 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 common short silver line, again with common silver line and some mormons also and some roses also do that similar kind of behavior. They feed on sometimes if there is a scarcity of food, then the then they eat on their own uh, shaded screen, uh, skin or uh, sometimes, you know, to protect themselves, uh, you know, after shedding the skin, it may be give a clue to the uh, birds that some kind of a creature is there because uh, uh, some larva tend to have well camouflaged. They can, you know, uh, camouflage themselves on the leaves, but shaded skin is having darker shades. So it can be easily noticeable to the predators. So to avoid that, Sometimes they feed on their own shaded skin. Thank okay, you. so so the next question is from Sarmista. She's asking, 
Why fly tries to lay egg on caterpillar? Is there any threat of ants on butterfly eggs? Uh, can you please repeat the question? She's asking why flies try to lay eggs on caterpillars. Is there any threat of ants on butterfly eggs? No, 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 no. Uh, actually, they are, uh, the larva of a butterfly is a host for the, those particular uh, um, flies, uh, flies. And uh, during the pupil stages uh, of particular, you can notice if you are rearing some um, uh, plain tigers or uh, caterpillars like. Uh, blue tiger, you can find some wasp species eclosing from the pupa. So, uh, you know, you may surprise, Are, ye to maine rare nahi kya tha. Main to butterfly rare kata tha, ye kaha se nikla? Hmm? So, uh, this is a particular host for uh, those wasp species. So, the next question is again by Sir Mr. She's asking, can a butterfly lay eggs in every season? Uh, some butterflies are seasonal. So if you go to Himalayas, like uh, some of the Apollos, which are known to lay egg uh, during, after winter season. And uh, you can, if you come to uh, peninsular India, and you can see certain species are very seasonal. They occur once in, a, once in a, uh, several months and they disappear. Let's say, take example of uh, painted lady. You can see uh, their population uh, rises in uh, monsoon season, in month of June especially. Okay. So the next question is by Shrishya. She's asking how to rear butterflies for beginners. Okay, so you may start from the common species like uh, uh, red Piero you can rear. Again, you can, you can plant certain host plants uh, which are very uh, easily available to the uh, local nursery which is close by to you and uh, you can uh, you know develop a butterfly garden at uh, at your terrace or near your window sill and you can you know support the common species uh, by providing them uh, a food source So the next question is by Kalyan Mukherjee. So he's asking, what is the legal matter in studying butterflies life cycle at home? Uh, you have to check whether the species which you are rearing is uh, comes under schedule one. So if it is a schedule one species, then definitely it is not advisable to, uh, to raise that at home. Uh, you should only do certain life cycles which are not comes under uh, schedule. And if uh, you are collaborating with certain uh, uh, institutions, so you should take permissions from them for studying and publishing them in the in the peer reviewed journals. So that is what I want to say. And thanks to Kalyanji for asking uh, this question. And I uh, and I would like to uh, you know uh, say that uh, he is one of the. Uh, you know, uh, um, good uh, observer in the field. Uh, I have seen his images of uh, various early stages from Bankura and he's done a good job. I learned to keep it up and uh, keep on asking such questions like, you know, it helps me to improve myself as well. Uh, some, sometimes it, it, you know, I may not be having that knowledge uh, which can be, you know, I'm getting from your questions. So keep on asking uh, such kind of questions. Over to you. Yes, sir. Uh, I have unmuted Kalyan, sir. So if you want to ask any questions, Kalyan, you can please carry on. Ah, yes, Kalyan ji, bolie. Hello. Hello, Kalyan ji. Can you hear me? Hello. Ah, Kalyan ji, bolie. Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, bolie, bolie. Actually, uh, I am asking about the, the legal uh, legal matter of this. Uh, uh, studying butterfly in the home, but I have seen many types of uh, life cycle have in the butterfly uh, India website. Uh, I don't think they have taken any permission or uh, like uh, like that from any institution or something else, because uh, those butterfly life cycles are uh, in schedule one one species. It's under schedule one species, 1972 uh, Wildlife Protection Act. Uh, but uh, uh, this is the confusion. So that I asked the. <laughs> No, no, but if you are rearing some common species which are not uh, comes under schedule, uh, then you can rear it. 
because you are trying to co contribute something to the science all right hello yes sir here he has muted himself okay, okay. so i'll go on to the next question um so someone called shubham jadhav is asking i want to know how female butterflies choose their right host plant to lay eggs okay okay hi shubham thanks for asking this question uh so there are various species and which are very host specific and they uh, scan their host plant uh, uh with you know their antennae like i showed you and with their legs also they scan their host plant and they scratch with their uh, legs a uh, uh, particular host plant they scratch with their legs and they try to identify this uh, this is particular host plant on which they need to uh, lay their eggs if you take example of common norman so uh, uh, they basically feed on curry leaves or some citrus family uh, fruit, uh, leaves so uh, which is having a uh, certain uh, smell which is uh, you know uh, they can be uh, identify the female easily okay so they lay egg by that way on those those particular host plants next question is by santosh ni she is asking how long after mating do butterflies lay eggs it depends upon the species from the family which it belongs to because uh, i have observed uh, in the himalayas uh, a species called polyomatus uh, which is uh, you know the uh, after mating which uh, after mating uh, her de eggs develop after 2 and 1/2 days or sometimes uh, after 3 days and they lay egg after 3 days so uh, in some cases some butterflies lay after 5 to 6 days so it depends upon the species uh, uh, and they lay egg according to this so the next question is by nagraj sir he is asking i observed plain tiger cats trying to pupate before reaching final instar why of why oh. and of course they died okay no sometimes there is a scarcity of uh, food plant or sometimes there if there are multiple caterpillars feeding on some certain host plant then uh, many cases some sometimes happens that uh, uh, there might be a possibility of cannibalism cannibalism may occur or uh, they immediately pup uh, pupate uh, you know to uh, uh, reach to the adult adult stages they uh, sometimes they pupate early and you can see uh, due to uh, consumption of uh, consumption of very less amount of uh, food plant sometimes some butterflies eclose uh, in a smaller size those those butterflies called as malnutrition butterflies okay the next question is by rajib day he is asking two lhps of swastus gremius to keep together at my home garden pot but caterpillar only feeds on one lhp what could be the reason uh, which lhp he planted he hasn't told, told me that so okay, he, he okay, just okay. said two lhp of swastus gremius he has kept and the caterpillars are feeding only on one okay they might be having uh, certain preferences they are host specific them and it may be in some cases they don't prefer uh, there is one example i would like to uh, share with you all that um, uh, the crimson rose butterfly which is uh, feeding on aristolochia climbers in uh, kerala uh, we have one species uh, where uh, crimson rose uh, lay eggs on it and they feed upon this particular host plant even southern bird bee also feed upon that host plant and if you bring the same plant over in mumbai and if you plant that in your garden the population over here um, in mumbai won't accept that host plant so uh, there might be a possibility that uh, host plant is not known for uh, uh, species with uh, the population which is exist there in uh, certain regional uh, in a certain regional uh, area hello so the next question is by neha mujumdar she is asking if i come across any parasites infecting butterfly pupa how do i proceed with the rearing of the parasite for further identification for research purpose she is also saying thank you for sharing your amazing journey okay so you can um, i i have shared already that the ndair which is a national bureau for agriculture important insect which uh, you know 
uh, study uh, in detail. They have their website. You can go on to their website and you can cross check uh, certain species they have already uh, published recently. So you can cross check or else you can contact uh, the head of the department that you are doing a serious uh, study on this topic and um, uh, I am interested to publish uh, certain papers. So can you please identify, identify, uh, do identification of this uh, particular species for my further research or shall I, how I can go ahead uh, with this species? So you can ask them directly. Uh, so the next question is by Melvin. He's asking, for creating a butterfly garden, how should the ratio of larval and host plants be? And how many species of plants can be kept in a particular place? Can I keep almost one individual of each plant or should it be different? So you can, uh, you can uh, plant uh, multiple of host plants over there. Uh, it depends upon the area as well, uh, how much area you have. Uh, and during the, within that area, uh, area, how many plants you can plant. If you are planting a tree, then definitely it will grow in the future. So you need to uh, calculate that thing as well. So uh, if you are um, planting some shrubs, so you can arrange it on several sides. Even you need to uh, consider the sunlight, the amount of sunlight from uh, uh, where the sunlight is coming from. So if you are planting some nectar plants, which needs uh, more sunlight, you need to plant into that direction. Okay. And uh, if you are planting some climbers, uh, then you can, uh, you know, keep certain space to, to you know, uh, uh, those uh, to grow that uh, plant and like on. So even if you, are, you are planting certain plants, so you need to, you know, uh, make certain patches in, in several corners of a particular given area. So the next question is by Gaurav. He's asking, is it possible to identify if a caterpillar is parasited or not? Uh, I'm asking this because there is a tamarind plant near my house on which there were six caterpillars of black raja. I brought them in my house, but they were all parasit. Oh, great, great observation. Yes, yes, you can easily add. Sometimes in case if you are, you know, once you become uh, habituated of uh, rearing butterflies, you will come to know which uh, particular larva is um, parasitized. Okay, so uh, basically it, uh, it is infected with parasitized. Uh, okay, so uh, the color of the larva sometimes you know changes or even uh, the activity of a ca caterpillar becomes very slow and it remains as it is and the um, larva, of, uh, larva of a parasites uh, which is within the host of that is a, of a butterfly caterpillar which uh, you know feeds inside the uh, inner gut of a caterpillar so the uh, caterpillar remains motionless in those those cases and you can easily make out uh, that something is wrong there with this caterpillar so that is how you can identify so the next question is by Ritwik is asking very information session thank you does tawny coaster eat its own eggshell after being hatched and yes. second, second yes. question is, does butterfly practice cannibalism? Yes, both questions, I, uh, I have the same answer. Uh, that is, yes, um, Tony Raja uh, feeds on its egg. Uh, uh, he's egg asking shed. about Tony Coaster. Tony Coaster, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, that also, that also I have observed uh, in many cases. They eat on eggshell and uh, later on they uh, feed on uh, their host plant. So the next question is by Seema. She's asking, why do butterflies lay their eggs only on specific host plants? Why? Can you please repeat the question? Why do butterflies lay their eggs only on specific host plants? Yes, because if they feed on certain plants uh, which are not compatible for the larvae, then in that case, the larvae may die. So. Uh, they are very host specific. So uh, on uh, they are particularly lay. They are very very particular uh, while laying their eggs. So the next question is by Bias. She is asking: Is there any particular reason that monkey puzzle feeds on the scar of leaves after laying the eggs? Do they take some plant chemicals to get over the yes, exhaustion? Yes, yes. Very good question, Bias. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the plants belong to the Euphorbiaceae family and uh, uh, 
a ruby ac family family which i depicted uh, in my slide uh, well which are having some alkaloids in their leaves the tender leaves have uh, some alkaloids so you know and our uh, egg laying process is very exhaustive process um, and to rejuvenate themselves the, the female butterflies immediately sometimes goes on uh, certain flowers to nectar or sometimes even feed on uh, the scars left behind by the caterpillar so that is what i showed out there so it was actually taking all alkaloids from that particular leaves and sometimes you can see uh, some tender leaves have tannin okay that is why the, those leaves are having red color so many adults also feed on uh, certain chemicals okay so the next question is also by bia she is asking any specific reason behind the different coloration of osmeterium in different species uh, sorry uh, can you please repeat the question okay, so she is asking any specific reason behind the different coloration of osmeterium in different species no there is no specific reason for this okay so the next question is by saurav day is asking parish sir any tips to protect caterpillars from fungal attack oh so uh, as i said earlier you need to clean your uh, containers so in which you are rearing the your caterpillars uh, you need to you know uh, clean uh, those uh, droppings uh, which are dropped by caterpillars on every you need to clean them on a regular basis so if that remains inside your container then it will definitely form a fungus and it will ultimately uh, you know uh, cause to caterpillar to die may so in some cases okay so the next question is by rithvik he is asking do butterflies have affinity towards specific coloration of flowers uh yes in some cases they have uh, attracted towards certain uh, colors especially with uh, the especially with the color yellow they are more attracted uh, with uh, yellow colors so rajib day has responded for the lhp names one is phoenix silvestris and other one is cocos musifera but phoenix silvestris yes, is both uh, are being yeah but the caterpillars are not feeding on cocos but instead feeding on phoenix okay okay Yeah. So the next question is by Savita. She is asking, does a single butterfly lay egg several times? Your observation stories are so inspiring. Any handling care you would like to detail? As I always feel I am not capable of rearing <laughs> caterpillars home. This especially when I have some rescued caterpillars home from cut tree, most plant completely eaten up, etc. Those are two different questions. Uh, can you please again repeat the question, please? So, so the first question is, does a single butterfly lay egg several times? yes yes they uh, the they have uh, you know uh, some species are called as multivoltine or some species are called univoltine univoltine means they are laying eggs only one time as well as uh, multivoltines are those who are laying eggs several times uh, there are some examples like uh, crows which are known to migrate so during the migration journey they met uh, with several uh, Uh, butterflies during the journey and they lay uh, wherever they go uh, during this journey uh, the second part of the question is any handling care you would like to detail while rearing butterflies any handling any handling care any sort would, of handling yeah any handling care you would like to detail while rearing caterpillars no i am not getting your question uh, she is asking any uh, Wait, uh, let, let me read out the a similar question asked by someone else. So, uh, what are the common techniques and cares for rearing butterflies at home? Hello. So can you hear me now? Hello, sir. Can you hear me now, sir? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, the question is, uh, the common techniques and cares for rearing butterflies at home. common technique so uh, start with uh, common species like uh, red piano you can start up with and you can observe uh, their early stages and you can release back to the nature uh, after reclosing 
um, that is what you can do okay uh, so the next question is by kalyan mukherjee he is asking uh, recently i have reared indian oak blue and large oak blue without any ant attention what will be effect of this fact on the adult butterflies of that particular species no no uh, there is there, there will not be any problem for the uh, adult butterfly if it is reaches to uh, pupal stage then that's it it's it doesn't reach uh, really means there will not be any problem in the uh, adults uh, for the adults yeah uh, savita i have i have unmuted you so you can uh, talk okay areesh i wanted to know if there is any uh, basic handling care for caterpillars when you rear them they rear them home because i feel quite incapable of doing it this is especially when you know i get cats which are rescued from countries or host plant is over so i have to keep them safe mm -hmm. sometime i feel oh, no i am not getting your question can you please repeat it again you are not actually audible to me not audible now hello you no your voice is breaking uh maybe due to the connection um uh, yeah, yeah, basic can, handling care you. of now you can okay i wanted to know about some basic handling care for caterpillars when rearing them home um these are especially the rescued ones which i get home and i'm always like they never successful so oh. i um, yeah little then, worried then, get... then you can uh, you know uh, if you are rearing then you can uh, observe them in uh, in your garden where you you are placing the food plants you can observe them uh, on the host plant itself you don't uh, keep it in the container you know uh, because many cases uh, it happens that uh, when you bring caterpillars from outside you keep them in a container so certain species you know stop uh, feeding on host plant so in that cases uh, you can do one thing uh, if they stop uh, feeding on uh, particular host plant then you just need to show them a sunlight so once you show them a sunlight they feel that they are back to the nature and they again start feeding upon it so that is what um, uh, you know i used to follow when i was doing life cycles interesting yeah thanks uh, thanks avita for asking this question uh, sir we'll take one last question so it's from bias again so she's asking is it mandatory that licenses one minute uh, okay yeah is it mandatory that licenses will get attended by ants if not is there any consequences uh, in many cases it happens like um, uh, you know uh, some tarukas which are uh, reared by uh, which are attended by several ants even large oak blue indian oak blue which are you know uh, completely different uh, you know attended by uh, ants such as uh, red weaver ants uh, and even even after you know, some sometimes some species need uh, needs special attention uh, attention by ants okay uh, that's one last question by rajiv day we'll finish it after this question okay, so he is asking sir uh, since 4 to 5 months i am i am getting lots of caltoris species eggs and caterpillars on phragmite species but till on, now on, but till now i species? don't uh, one minute sir i am getting lots of caltoris species sorry caltoris species eggs and caterpillars on phragmite species Hello? but but till now i don't have uh, seen single adult butterfly inside the larval host plant can you enlighten us no, with the Can you can you please, uh, Sharan? Can you please repeat the question? Your 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 voice was breaking in meanwhile. Okay, can you hear I me now, sir? Some some network issue with uh, my connection. Yeah, <laughs> can yeah. you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Okay, he's asking, uh, sir. Since four to five months, I am getting lots of Caltoris species eggs and caterpillars on Phragmite species. Phragmite. What is Phragmite? Uh, I I I don't have any clue on that. <laughs> I should ask Rajin. Uh, is it a host plant? Can you yeah, please try yeah. it? Yes. Yeah, it should be a host plant. But okay, till now, okay. I, I I have not seen a single adult butterfly inside the larval host plant. 
can you enlighten us whether calcar oh, species no, no, no. The, the, by uh, the, uh, it's like uh, if i'm the possible that the uh, the adult may coming uh, during the uh, dawn and dusk to lay their eggs on particular host plant during uh, during that time we were not uh, you know uh, keeping attention to see whether there is a adult butterfly uh, present or not so that was so the second that was like, the second uh, uh, line so can you enlighten us whether calcar species lay eggs in daytime or evening or night so after uh, completed the life cycle kalesh ji confirmed that calcar species is calcar is bromus bromus oh great yeah so i think we can end here sir for anyone who has any more questions please feel free to uh, send in the group which we have and i will forward the same to parish sir so before we end uh, thank you so much parish sir for doing this session yeah, yeah. it was really wonderful and uh, i personally enjoyed learning a lot of things we'll thanks so much thanks charan <laughs> for uh, inviting me for this lecture and i would like to you know congratulate uh, for bringing so many individuals uh, so many enthusiasts uh, all over india uh, you you know uh, invited them and asked to participate them so this is a big event uh, which is going to happen so thanks again to you my pleasure sir thank you so much thanks yeah, everyone thanks. for joining yes